Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd just like to start by, you know, by saying that uh, going into my 21st year, uh, both Mickey and I, and uh, and you know, without a doubt, nothing's changed from the standpoint of, you know, what our philosophy is, year in and year out, you know. You know why he bought the franchise why I came here and you know what we try to accomplish is that every single year regardless of what the team looks like <laughs> we always come to win a championship I don't care what the odds are I don't care what the prognosticators say um, that's always been our, our goal and our objective and that's never changed. And over those 20 years, we truly have established what I think are, you know, great procedures, standards, policies, practices, you know, all of those things that I think an organization is built on and, you know, try to keep them going. Sometimes you have to reframe them. Uh, the policy book is a little afraid at the edges after a while sometimes when you keep pulling it out and reading it. And, and so we will continue, and that's what our job is right now, is to continue to try uh, to do that. So, you know, right after we were eliminated from the playoffs, uh, you know, the phase uh, of, uh, of kicking into the 2015-2016 season started. So that's where we are. Pat, there was a common theme late in the season. If you had won any of the games of Milwaukee, Detroit, Chicago, when huge leads were blown, you would have been in the playoffs. So my question to you is, when you looked at those games, what did you see as a failing then? What do you see as a way to remedy it? And how troubling was it to be so up very late in games like that and wind up giving them all away? Uh, it's, um, losing any game where you have a double-digit lead uh, is disconcerting. But then you can go back and you know, that's a very small sample size. Uh, it happened at the wrong time. I, I think more than anything else, it happened at the wrong time uh, in the last 12 or 13 games of the season. Uh, you know, but if you go back, you know, throughout the course of the season, uh, there were other games like that. But there were also other games that we came back and we won that we probably shouldn't have won. You know, just take a look at the Henry Walker game. <laughs> against uh, you know Orlando. So uh, I understand, Ira, where you're coming from with that. And obviously, in spite of all the adversity, there's not a person in the organization that doesn't think we should have made the playoffs. So from that standpoint, um, whether it was those games or earlier games or, or something else that happened, uh, you fight through adversity all year long. It uh, it strengthens the core and it, uh, and you know the armor, and what you wish to come out of that is something that's positive, which is the first round of the playoffs. That didn't happen. Uh, I'm moving on. Uh, I have no regrets, and I don't think Coach does. I don't think Mickey does. But because if you start, you know, hanging on to all that stuff, you just, you know, you'll just continue to beat yourself up. So, you know. I think, you know, I think I told Eric to go beat himself up for a good week. And if he didn't want to, I'd help him. You know, that's what you do. <laughs> you know, so, you know, and I think he's done with that and we're moving on. And just to follow that up, though, obviously you're in charge of the coaching staff as the next level. Were there times during or after those games, I guess after is the better way to phrase it, where you thought something different or better could have been done, that if it happens one time, that's one thing. If it happens two times, that's you know, a couple of things. But the fact is it did happen in such critical games at such critical times. How involved were you with that after those games? Uh, I sit with the coaching staff uh, every night after every game. As a matter of fact, I'm the first one in head coach's office. I sit there in the corner. I'm sure there are some nights that he doesn't want me there <laughs> when he walks through the door, <laughs> but I'm there anyhow. And and we sit there, and and you know the guys that 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 he relies on the most at that time. There's a 10 or 15 minute, you know, cool down period, and uh, and then there's a perspective about the game. So, 
what kind of conversations that Eric and I have, you know, based on you know what might happen at the end of any game, uh, there's no doubt that we will have you know a candid discussion about that. Not then, mm -hmm. uh, probably the next morning or something. Uh, but uh, I'm good at writing notes. Um, I've been in that trench before, um, and so yeah, I see everything. He knows I see everything, and and I think from that standpoint. Uh, you know, we're on the same page. But I, I like him as, as, you know, I'm an ex-coach. You know, I can relate to that moment more than, than anybody else. And so I know just how, how difficult it is some nights. Pat, you lost, obviously you lost half the locker room in July you know, with all the changes. And then you lost Josh, you lost Chris in a really scary way midway yeah. through the year. I know this is teetering on the line of excuses that you don't make, but how tempted are you just to look at all of the injuries, the Chris situation, all that, and just just forget it, just kind of wipe it away and not try to go solve it, just mm -hmm. just chalk it up as, as an abnormality, chalk it up as an anomaly, and just move on to the next year? If Is you see tempting? me leaning my head to the left, then you know that's my most comfortable position right now because I have a sciatic nerve coming out of my cervical, you know, you know up here. That's killing me. So – but I'm not going to make an excuse for it. But we just did talk about it. <laughs> so <laughs> the narrative was set, you know, back in, in October. And I think the narrative, you know, that, that uh, about injuries, uh, which were real, and they are every year with every team, something happens. Uh, the top three teams in the Eastern Conference and Western Conference Finals, at least three of them that, that are not in the playoffs, Indiana and in Oklahoma City and Miami all had major losses to key players. And, you know, they didn't make it. So losing a transcendent player is going to be difficult. And then losing others along the way for indefinite periods of times uh, makes it even more difficult because there's constant change going on and a lack of continuity. Uh, but I do believe the narrative of, of the constant uh, talking, uh, writing, reading, disseminating information, you know, social media grabs onto somebody with a hangnail and then it's two weeks you know, that they're going to miss or something is totally out of hand. And that has to be stopped. You know, so I would always take the narrative of, you know, what, you know, I, I'm just picking out a name. You know, if somebody would ask Kobe Bryant uh, or any other player of his ilk about whatever happened to him, he would probably tell them to go F themselves. I'm fine. You know, I mean, I'll watch Larry Bird lay on his back <laughs> in playoff games, and I know how, how injured he was. And when he was asked a question about it, he would say the same thing. He just said, I'm fine. And that's just not the way it is today. I think throughout the league, this is a league-wide problem. This is, a, this is a – it's not a media problem. It's what you write about. It's what's happening. And, but if they ever did anything and they wanted to try to improve uh, – you know, the situation with every team as to, you know, why these injuries happen, why players miss games, why the narrative is so loud uh, and that it creeps into the subconscious of the athlete, that the athlete also becomes a little bit weaker uh, in his mental uh, toughness uh, to stay the course on what really is an injury and what is a debilitating injury. And so, you know, we get to the point where every night where there's – you don't even know who you're going to play, even on a good, healthy team, because they're always saying, well, this guy is questionable or this guy is whatever. And, and so I'd like to try and uh, you know, change the narrative you know, for our team and you know, get back to the reality of what, of what being a professional athlete is all about, is that's what it's about. And being a professional athlete is that you're not going to always feel well and you're not going to always be at 100% and you might be at 90% or 80%. And uh, I would always ask that player, you know, when I coach, can you give me one minute or two minutes or can you give me an out-of-bounds pass or, 
you know, can you give me a hard foul or whatever it is. And, and I, I don't think uh, the modern-day athlete has that state of mind.